Go lefty? You got any left in you? No, we're not doing lefties <laughs> today. Not I'm 43 lefty? years old, dude. All right, we'll go righty. Uh, bouncer top left. Bouncer? I don't do bouncers. <laughs> there we go. There's your top left. You didn't call it. I called it. <laughs> Later. We're kicking off this season at Loyola for a reason. One reason. It's Pat Spencer. One more, one more, one more. In my mind, he's unequivocally the best attackman in the country because he can shoot, he can feed, and he can dodge at an elite level. The program's only won one national title in 2012. If you had the guy to start a program around and to build the championship season around, it's Spencer. Six and legs! Six and legs! Come on, tight! Tight! Stay tight! When you watch this team practice, you see the tempo, but more importantly, you see the improvising and players' instincts kind of taking over. And when I watch Pat Spencer, he makes every single player on the field better because of his decision making. Hey, when you make that flip like that, you read to do the shot right away. Yeah, there's no shot. Just bang it through. Okay. That guy had it, that guy flipped right in your face, right? Just make the next one. Okay. Got a two on one on the back side. Yeah. Boys, you know, our ass is tagged right now, fellas. I think a lot of it on that rep at X, we're giving them a 10 yard cushion to start their run. We got to get out and play gloves. We got to dictate a little more. Let's go. Generational type talents change coaches. How has Pat changed you? <laughs> Probably made me relax a little more on game day, knowing that we've got a you know a player that's so unique. I think Mark Van right now would tell you that you know we've got a coach on the field. Yeah. You know, not only is he gonna get guys to their right spots on the field, but he's also come into huddles and said, Coach, what if? What do you think if we go to this formation or you know maybe we're back cutting here every time down? And and I think that relationship you know has developed so much trust. When I watch Pat play lacrosse, I see a basketball player. How do you think basketball has made him the lacrosse player he is? Well, he's so passionate about both sports. I mean, obviously the vision, his ability to make quick decisions, to read, react. Because Pat, like I said, it's the game has slowed down for him. Dude, you're a sniper. Pressure's on. Cherry on top. Who would you say the one guy out there, whether it's you know a retired NBA guy or a current superstar, that's hoop game is similar to your style. I try to take a lot from a lot of different guys' games. I mean, I know it's cliche, but I love the way LeBron plays the game. Yeah, he's got that passing mentality and yeah. making everyone around him better. So I'm going to ask you then, Jordan or LeBron? <laughs> Come on, man. You, you I, opened I love, it up. I for love me. I love Jordan's mentality. All I right. Do. So it's I, Jordan. I would say Jordan. Doesn't really care what anybody thinks. Yeah. He's just a competitor at heart. So. When I watch you play lacrosse, I almost see you playing basketball. So like from a one-on-one -on -one dodging standpoint, how do you kind of go through that process in your head from basketball split to lacrosse split and how they're similar? I think the moves are pretty similar. I do something that's pretty simple and a split dodge is just three steps, split dodge, one, two, three. It's kind of similar to a crossover in basketball, where you're just trying to get that defender off his line. So show it to me in basketball what you're talking about. <laughs> There's like so, a hesitation or something there, right? Yeah, what is it's that? like it's one, two, three, trying to get that defender off yeah. your line and create that step. You almost want him to turn his hips twice. Exactly, yeah. I mean, if you just make one step and go, it's a lot easier to stay with the guy. Yep. A lot of it's based off the initial reaction of the defender. So, I mean, obviously you're not gonna get him on his foot dodge every time. So, I can feel where he's at. When I make that foot dodge, if I think he's still with me and I'm not gonna get that step, I know I'm gonna be able to roll back and eventually make a counter move to it. When you're on a basketball court or you're on a lacrosse field, you don't have like... Two moves. Two moves that you're going to do or you don't have a script. No. 
you're kind of just feeling things off of what the defenders are yeah. doing. You're working off your instincts, how he reacts or how he lined up. Yep. And then you just kind of take those angles and play them to your advantage. I'm dropping like a, a Steph Curry three. Feel it. Oh. Oh! That's not even edited. Let's get after it, energy and everything we do. Here we go, dogs out three, one, two, three, dogs! Senior year in high school, everyone knew who you were around here. Yeah. But nationally, you took it to another level in that opening tournament game against Duke. Spencer is just his overall fluidity. Watch his footwork on this, Joe. Just explodes there at X. For anyone who was watching, they knew you arrived. When was the moment in college lacrosse that you knew you arrived? I think right when I stepped on and, and practiced here, it, for me it was never a question of whether or not I'd be able to play. I just had to figure out my role. That inner confidence though, when you step on a field, do you feel like you're the best? Yeah, but I feel like you, that's how you have to feel. Anytime I step on the field, I don't want to do anything less than what I'm capable of. So whether it's one on one, you don't want to lose in a one on one. Whether it's five on four, you should score. So it's just every single drill, it just has that drive, that competitive edge. Seven, I got You could start with the ball anywhere on the field. Where are you going? Uh, probably dead center at X. I've noticed when you play basketball, you'll dribble kind of in front of me when I'm defending you. Yeah. You have a different kind of cradle in lacrosse where a lot of attackmen are trained to really have their stick right next to their head, arm out. I find that you attack straight up. What's the logic behind that? I think if you turn your back here, you lose a lot of the ability to make a play on that side of the ball. You're back to that side of the field. It's a lot easier to defend a guy who's here, making one move this way. Now you're here, he's back to that whole side. I think if you square up, you have the ability to go either way. He has to honor you. There's times when I break down film on you, I say, wow, this kid's actually hanging his stick. So when defenders feel that the stick is inviting them to go after it, like, what's your first step? Like, It just, just depends on where it is. If they go for a quick, quick check, poke check, a lot of times their, their weight's lunging at you, which allows for a quick counter move. So if they lunge at you that way, and then you can get by quick this way. So it just depends on where their weight is going. A lot like the hoop court when it was all in front of you. Yeah. Being at X, or being on goal line extended, the whole offense is in front of you. So when you make that through pass, what are your steps progression wise? I think the one thing is making sure you're not throwing it off your back foot. I see a lot of guys try to make that pass and they see the look, the look is there, but the defender's in their gloves. I think they can just throw it off their back foot. But uh, the other thing is kind of putting it to space. It's like a quarterback. So when you're throwing it, that defender or that midi is not always right in the right spot. Yep. But kind of making that eye contact, knowing that he knows you're going to throw that skip ball and kind of putting it in a position where he's going to be able to go get it and have a look at a step down. I've seen you on the gun. What are you, what are you hitting at now? Like 72, 73? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I, think, I think the fastest I hit is like 103 at a camp one time. You know, you and I talked about your shooting. That was one area that you wanted to really get better. Yeah. What have you done? So freshman year, no one really had a scout on you. You were able to kind of flat just Come off shoot. here, flat, flat line it, and just end up yep. shooting it over the top. Now it's about finding the space and changing your plane. Exactly. So when I get to here, and I'm, I'm in a position where they're not sliding, but I can't get the shot off right away, but I have them on my hips still, kind of creating that little extra separation, stepping away, and then finding that far pipe. You want to get your hands away from your body you mentioned? Yeah, I think a little bit working on my torque. How about when you develop this outside shot, what would be a good counter move? I think kind of the hitch a little bit, maybe getting yeah. underneath. But the other thing I want to work on is when I start to do that, that's where my tendency comes in to kind of hit, and then I, I drop my hand here. Gotcha. I want to work on keeping those hands up a little bit. You drop your hands, you probably so, drop your shoulder, you probably shoot high. Yeah, I drop high. my hand here to drop. To kind you probably of shoot high or wide. Yeah. So, so a defender flies out you there, so and you have options. I'm gonna keep it up. So, something I gotta work on, but, but it's a work in progress. A lot of great championship teams have that one player 
regardless of what the sport is, who takes them to that next level and hoists a trophy. Why are you that guy for Loyola? I think I think I have a really good understanding on what it takes to help each individual around me and, and make them a little bit better. And I think that kind of critical in terms of if you're going to be the guy on a team, make others around you better and kind of lift everybody else's game up. The other is I think we, we have the best staff in the country and they're not getting the best athletes out of high school. And that's OK to say that because what they've done is transformed a lot of guys and made them better lacrosse players. What would you tell a young kid who's in a similar situation to you right now that might be a freshman and might be the next great thing in his program? I would say don't let it get to your head. I think it's more, you know, you're going to have a lot of people telling you how great you are and how well you do this, how well you do that. And you're going to have your flaws and so just learn and Stay within yourself. I think you know you can always improve, and so work on your game, work on what you can control, and the rest will kind of take care of itself.